Kyra Media Family. Thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. We hope your experience with us is fruitful. While we are loading your experience, please do us a quick favor and hit that like button from whichever platform you're watching or listening on. And we do hope you consider hitting that subscribe or follow button so you can check out more of our amazing content. All right, let's start the show. Oh, sorry, I was jamming. Welcome, everybody. How you doing? It is your boy Kwame, joined by the Maverick, the Maverick Licious, Melanin Proficient, Just Dominic. What's going on, sir? Hey, hey, hey. see, you can't barely say the bearded one because it's I chopped it halfway off now. <laughs> right. You yeah. I'm like, what happened to your beard? Yeah, I did a little trip. Come back. Right, I, I did a little trim myself, but I always do. A, I, I always wear black, so you guys can't see it. So you you got some good, good, good old lighting over there, Dominic. <laughs> yeah, and all this super platinum blonde hair I have. So <laughs> right, yes, I'm doing fantastic. I am so happy to be back this week for yes. another great episode of the Unusual Mavericks because yes. we're going to be talking about someone really cool today. Uh, yes. a, really a, a legend in his own a right. Legend. We love him. We love, are you living single? Ooh, <laughs> I ain't really sing. I'm glad I got my girl. Pick yeah. <laughs> your head up. What? Anyway. Shout <laughs> out to everyone who is in the living single lane, okay? Um, hey, what's going on, Michaela? What's going on? Thank you, Mavericks, for Michaela. joining on it. Dr. Holt Dr. Holt. Just, oh, you can still see it. You just, you got to introduce the beard. <laughs> Yeah, you can still see it. You can still see it. Right, right, right. Uh, what's going on, y'all? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys do me a quick favor while you guys are in here. Hit that like button, share, and subscribe. It does help the algorithm. And it does help you guys uh, uh, let other blurs know that we're out here. So um, we are going to be talking about a lot of Comic-Con, oh, excuse me, not Comic-Con, comic stuff, as well as Marvel and DC stuff. So uh, without further ado, Dominic, shall we get into one of our favorite times of the day? Let's do it. Get into that Maverick alert. Whew. And boy, oh boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Hold on one second. I didn't want to cough on the mic, so thank you so much. All right, first and uh, foremost, let's talk about... Oh, I didn't even... I have a, let me get my notes up. Let me get my notes up. Please. Before Please. I even and read it. every word, uh, enunciate every, every word. I will, I will, I will. Give me one moment <laughs> because you, you, you try to be smart, okay? You try to be real smart, but I got you, Dominic. That's all right. Where is my um notes? Oh, it's right down here. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Let's go ahead. Episode you want me to read 46. Story? Oh, oh, no, yes, no, no, no. That's I'm right. Talking. I, I can do this one. Thank you so much. I can do this one, and I will proudly do this one. We're going to be talking about, um, as soon as it pops up, there we go. We're going to be talking about Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. You know, my husband, one of my husbands, Jason Momoa. Mm -hmm, praise Jesus. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. How you doing? How you doing, Zietti? You doing all right? You doing good? Okay, praise Jesus. Let's go over here and get into what's going on. So Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom uh, set... Uh, is set to um, uh, release on uh, on Max, uh, HBO Max, or now known as Max. So Warner Brothers Pictures, Aquaman, and The Lost Kingdom will start streaming on Max starting February 27th. That's just less than a week away. Um, the sequel to the highest grossing DC film, uh, which stars Jason Momoa, ex-husband to legend... Really? You had to put that legendary, in there? Legendary. Legendary. Finish. Finish. Okay. Uh, to that girl uh, over there, Lisa Bonet, um, is no, returning... ex-husband to legendary actress Lisa Bonet. 
I should have read this before I you are sneaky. All right, so anyway, um is returning as the superhero um sees uh, Arthur Curry slash Aquaman balancing his duties as both the king of Atlantis and a new husband and father. The hit movie Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is directed by James Wan and produced by Peter Saffron. Juan and Rob uh, Rob Kawan, excuse me, um, uh, Galen Vass Vassman and Walter Hamada serve as executive producers. I'm looking Walter forward. Walter Hamada, look at that. We haven't seen his name in a long time, huh? No, I thought his name was something Hamada. Is Armada something? Uh, no, Hamada. That's his why is he in it? Name. I thought we don't like him. But he's a producer on the film. Oh. He doesn't have his big position anymore, but he served as serves as executive producer. Hold, hold on, hold, one, one, excuse me, one second, Dominic. Uh, uh, you need a mop. First of all, I don't need a mop, okay, <laughs> Michaela. Absolutely, um, and a bucket, Michaela. Legendary was ne uh, never was. Uh, thanks, Major. <laughs> Let's go. Here. He tried to take my man. That's what it is. Lisa Monet tried to take my man. But anyway, um, so shout out to uh uh to the oh uh, hi. Hello, sir. Who said uh, who said she was never a legend legend? Uh major boys. Uh, <laughs> oh, he don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Clearly. There's a lot of ads. The Cosby going on show in this, is black history. Huh? Uh no. There's a lot of ads. Don't nobody have a nobody has a shirt on in this I movie. Mean, What's going on here? Let uh, and the suits are wearing the, these bodies very well, so I'm looking forward to seeing Wardrobe. you on seven. Yes, my God, on today. some clothes. Yes. All right. So next up, uh, speaking of uh, these, um, hold on. What? Why are you here, girl? Okay. Hold on. Speaking of these, um, move this down here. Thank you so much. Speaking of um, Max, uh, their competitors, Disney Plus, sees a mass exodus streaming platform uh, loses 1.3 million subscribers. 1.3 million subscribers. Uh, we're talking about, like, that's huge, first of all, after controversial decisions were made. Uh, Disney Shore has uh, some huge plans ahead, purchasing a stake in Epic Games. Uh, which will lead to some interesting collaborations, like a potential Taylor Swift concert in Fortnite. Okay. As well as a virtual theme park. But not everything is uh, sunshine and roses because a grand total of 1.3 million subscribers uh, have just left their streaming service. Disney Plus lost millions of subscribers in last in the last quarter of 2023, uh, during uh, Disney's Q1 earnings call for the fiscal year of 2024, a lot uh, was revealed. While there were quite a lot of positive things to look forward to in 2025 um, within the MCU and Star Wars franchise, franchise, excuse me, some very bad news was uh, revealed. Around 1.3 million people unsubscribed from the Disney streaming service after the company hiked up its price and debuted poorly rated MTU series and flop movies in the last quarter of 2023. According to the information in the earnings call, Disney Plus went from 11, excuse me, 112.6 million subscribers in 2023 down to 111.3 million in December 2023. Um, well, two the, months? Yeah, that's crazy. That's actually really crazy. This comes after Disney introduced new subscription prices with the ad fee ad free tier increased its price from ten dollars and ninety nine cents a month to thirteen dollars and ninety nine cents a month. Uh in uh in October of twenty twenty three, Star Wars and MCU fans were outraged and disagreed with paying more for this platform uh uh, for this platform full of lackluster movies and poorly written TV. According to Forbes.com, the subscriber drop has continued even in January of 2023. That is Ooh. absolutely insane. Hey, Cupcake, what's January up? January 2024. 24. Yeah. yeah. What's up, Simeon? What's going on? How you doing, sir? Hey, hey, y'all. Yeah, I, I, it, it is It is insane. It is insane. Uh, uh, you said a lot of trade. <laughs> so last month they had even more drop off, but we don't know the numbers yet. No, not yet. Not as uh, not as of yet, which is concerning. We'll probably find out in March, huh? Probably, yeah. Because I think Q, yeah. Q, Q1 is still going on, so we're we're and not, I don't even think we're going to find out all of it in March because I think we're going to find out probably towards the end of March, because um, Q1 is uh, February. 
January, February, and March. So we may not even get anything oh. until April. April, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, at least not an accurate Ouch. report. So right. that's that's really concerning. And so, you know, I don't know if that's that's not a good thing, but at the same time, um <laughs> sorry, I just got a uh a text. <laughs> um that's not a good um a good thing for Disney Plus. So um we we'll, we'll see we'll see we'll see how uh how everything goes. Next up on the Maverick alert is Black Superman. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing his name um because I'm not trying to. That's not my goal, but I believe it is pronounced Tanisi Tanis Tanahesi Tanahesi Coates. Am I correct? I'm gonna, I'm just going to leave it at that. Tanahesi Coates uh takes the helm for a Black Superman movie, cast representation, impact, and what to expect in 2024. Black Superman represents more than just a casting choice. It embodies a seismic cultural shift in superhero cinema. With uh, to make, to, uh Mr. Coates and J.J. Abrams Tanisha, as the yeah. uh, to, 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 to what? I said Tanisha. Tanisha. Okay, forgive me for mispronouncing uh, if that's how you pronounce the name. But, me too. Uh, uh, Coates and uh, uh, J.J. Abrams at the helm. This project heralds a new era of representation and narration, excuse me, narrative exploitation, um, exploration rather, within this genre. By reimagining one of the most iconic uh, characters in comic book history as Black, DC Films is, taking, is making a powerful statement about the importance of diversity and inclusion in storytelling. The black superhero movie spearheaded by uh Coates and uh Jeffrey Jacob Abrams, not his full government, JJ Abrams, right? Is just another uh entry in the superhero genre. It is a cultural mind milestone that represents a shift towards greater inclusion and representation in cinema by reimagining one of again the one of the most iconic comic book he heroes or comic book characters in comic book history this project has the potential to spark conversations challenge pre uh, preconceptions and inspire a new generation of fans this film is expected sometime towards the end of 2024 which that is interesting i didn't even know it was gonna it, they were already filming so well, you know we've been hearing about jj abrams and his project for almost two years now because mm -hmm. oh. that's this was before gun Oh, that's a really nice name. Actually, I like how that's pronounced. Tanahasi. Thank you so much. Talk yes, to love me. it. Yeah. But remember, we've been hearing about this project before uh, Gunn and Saffron took over as the heads of DC Studios. Yes. So it's not surprising because this was supposed to be the main version. Remember, this yeah. is going to be the main DCEU version until Gunn took over. Yeah. So it's so they've had a couple of years, two, three years now to get this uh, together. So I'm really happy that we're starting to finally hear a little bit about it. I yeah. thought it was dead in the water. I thought so too. I thought so too. Um, so yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be super interesting. Hey, John, what's up, Queen? Thank you so much for joining in. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, hey. so I, I'm looking forward to to all of that. I, I think this is going to be a good, and he he's very interesting in, in terms of of the look um, of 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 an, an appeal of especially as far as like the comic book accuracy of it all. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what 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 this is going to look like. And I'm and we've talked about this Love before. The cape. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, the the suit is is dope. Um, and I hope yeah. that they stick to that because that that's very different from um what we currently see, but. Um, we talked about this before, Dominic, when this was even in um, speculation, that we didn't yeah. even want this to be the main superhero, uh, Superman, in the, the universe. But this was a great way, a way to kind of have like an Elseworlds or, or some type of a, other spinoff um, and branch in, in a multiverse. So that that's really, really cool. Yes. So we'll see. What, Which what is, it was written to be that. So Right, right. Yeah, exactly. So so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll keep you guys posted on it. Last but not least, as far as um, stories go, The Last Airbender dropped today. Um, so I cannot wait. I've talked to you guys before about how I'm a huge fan of The Last Airbender, and I was thoroughly upset 
about the M Night Shyamalan movie. So um, a lot of people were really upset. It was really whitewashed. It was it was it was not even accurate to the original show. Um, so, but what I love about this so far, um, I I was a little skeptical. I'm gonna be honest. I was a little skeptical to see if Netflix was gonna do this. But at least they're not whitewashed. They're all uh, Asian actors um, uh, or have Asian descent. Uh, so you know, I'm looking forward to that. It looks really pretty. Um, it looks uh, uh it looks accurate to the storyline doesn't it the it actors look like good. the cartoon they do that's why yeah yeah they look just like like ang looks like ang um, so yes. i want to see how they they do this and um and and um i watch or listen rather to uh kid fury and uh crystal from the reed um the reed podcast shout out to the reed um uh, and they had they just recently had their anniversary i think it was their 11 year or 12 year anniversary shout out to them um and there was a point uh, where uh they brought up this conversation or kid fury it's, it's a blurred so he brought up the, you know the last amber and then he said i'm not going to watch it unless the majority of the actual fans of the last airbender says it's actually good you should watch it not those that are just jumping in because they just saw the legend of Korra and that was it we're talking right. about the original last airbender fandom yes. we're talking about the, the diehard fans like myself yes. um <laughs> who who understand like i'm just getting into Korra because i i really i was really angry about that they stopped it um and i thought they were going to continue on it at least you know at least we would see some of the life of of ang but i'm seeing more of that in Korra. Uh, in, in the legend you know, of Korra, so. you know that they're doing that though they're gonna show all of the folks that you just showed on screen just now all grown up so they're yeah. doing another animated series to show them i think 20 years in the future which, which is so gonna be awesome. yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about that that's gonna be dope so um so yes yeah, so i'm so i'm gonna be drop we're gonna actually be doing launching our podcast <laughs> the audio version of this and we're going to be doing a recap i think they dropped all of the episodes but we're going to do one episode at a time and make sure you guys uh we'll, we'll let you know it will be in the first the next couple of weeks because um we can't delay any longer <laughs> yes. so um i i really am excited about this show and i'm looking forward to seeing um what they're going to do True. with it yeah all right well that's that's for the last airbender but before we go into the next section we want to go and talk about our trailer drops there's some trailers that have dropped within the past couple of weeks one today um we talked about the last uh excuse me justice league crisis on infinite earth the part two excuse me part one but the the part two the trailer for part two has dropped today if i'm not mistaken today or yesterday um we cannot play the audio and we cannot play too too much of the um of the uh video because we will you know get uh banned so i'm gonna go ahead and move that over here so we don't get banned. yeah so it's it's really crazy you know how youtube is y'all but go ahead and go over to dc or excuse me warner brother entertainment uh, uh facebook youtube excuse me and you'll see the trailer there uh it looks like it's gonna be really really dope i'm excited about it um the first one um mm -hmm. uh dominic and i really really enjoyed um we talked about it i think we're gonna do a podcast on that as well uh just a review on the first one before the the next one comes out or the part two comes out but i'm looking forward to it also deadpool uh deadpool 3 rather it's coming out um and they just recently dropped a uh trailer on that as well so um it looks really good we'll see how that comes um about i'm not a huge deadpool fan um just in the comics and also at in in the movies i liked the first one um i thought the first one was cool the second one was okay i, I didn't hate it um but you know um I, i'm just not a, a huge deadpool fan um but it's an, I'm not saying that it was bad. I just, I'm just not, it's one of my least favorite characters, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go to the movies to see it, but I'm probably going to, you know, wait for it to come on streaming or, you know, whatever. But what are your thoughts on, on, on Deadpool and, and uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths? I, you know, I'm here for Crisis. That is one of my all time favorite storylines, period, across both franchises. That storyline was is so well written. And I love yeah. it, love it, love it. So yeah. I'm really excited to see the second film. And I, I do hope that we review all three films of Crisis. Yeah. Since it's all coming out this year, we might as well go ahead and do that. With Deadpool, I liked the first one. I mm -hmm. loved the second one, actually. And yeah. this one, Deadpool versus Wolverine, I think. Is that the official title? Uh, I think that it's Deadpool. Is 3. that the official? 
Or it's, okay. I, because I, I keep know. seeing them say Deadpool versus Wolverine, and I don't know if that's a working title or what, yeah, it, or I don't what know. it is. I, I haven't looked that up. Um, uh, so did okay. I. Uh, oh, yeah. Timmy would say uh, he enjoyed them as well. So um, uh, the second one was hilarious. So he enjoyed So Simeon yes, enjoyed the, uh, the first one and agree. the second one. Yeah, the second one. Yeah, I'm just not. You know what it is for me? I'm, I'm not really a comedy show, yeah. movie, comic. Thing. I'm just look. I just want like action and you know excellent. Like I'm, I'm. Look, that's what I'm. Well, looking I'll for tell you action. this. Mm -hmm. I like him over She-Hawk because She-Hawk is supposed to be written to be the same kind of character where she breaks the fourth wall and it's comedy and da 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 da. -da. Deadpool, he's crazy. And I, I would rather I would interact rather with Wolverine and uh, the Hawk and mm -hmm. Spider Man. He's he fits in a place. Yeah, so I, yeah. I can definitely get with him there. Yeah, I would rather place. watch uh, watch Krishan Rock talk about nothing than watch uh, She Hawk. Okay, that's how I feel. That's true. I agree. <laughs> Just, I, that was a terrible, terrible, terrible show. All right, y'all. Let's get into blurred news. We're gonna go ahead and scoot on along, um, and then we'll take a break afterwards and then get into T C Carlson, um, uh, Carson. Excuse me. So let's get into blurred news. Uh, Y'all know we we we're dropping all of this stuff. There's a lot going on in this blurred news, so we're gonna move as quickly as we can. First up, we'll go into Marvel Studios and talk about Madam Web. Ooh. When I oh, God. say that I I would be embarrassed by what is about to be said here, Madam they Web. They are reading her for filth. For filth. Just send it to streaming, y'all. But uh, Madam Web tickets refunded as moviegoers have uh, had enough of Marvel's box office failures are at a disturbing rate. Mar Madam Web is making news for all the wrong reasons. In a disappointing turn of events, uh, the movie sees MCU fans demand uh, or says that M sees that MCU fans demand refunds on tickets at various theaters as sales decline all over the United States. While it was clear in the past few weeks that the movie would uh, cause Sony distress, mass refunding of uh, advanced booking uh, tickets is a new upsetting event. Distribute distributed by Sony Pictures, it is Produced by Marvel Entertainment, Columbia Pictures, D. Bonaventura Pictures, and TSG Entertainment, all of whom will face the brunt of the box office failure. As per The Hollywood Reporter, um, uh, yes, uh, the movie House Insider reported that the declining sales could be seen in real time. Not only is this <laughs> spelling bad news for the movie, but it's also seems to be the end of the planned franchise uh marking one of the lowest openings madam web made 25.7 million dollars from the international market and 26.2 million from the north american market in six days reported uh reported the daily mail not including the refunds issued to moviegoers the actual numbers are lower uh making this the worst performing marvel movie of all time Father you know what i find interesting i find interesting that they tried to save face by putting out the 25.7 million internationally and then saying but domestically we did 26.2 girl you know you didn't you're not simeon, even including the refunds that part simeon and there's no way i'm going to go pay to go see it in theaters i'll wait for it to come on streaming and i'm not even going to buy it on amazon prime i'll wait for it to come on streaming mm-hmm this is yeah. embarrassing. Yeah, this is this really, is really bad. Embarrassing. Exactly, Sean. Enough is enough. Y'all need to figure this out. This is too much. Well, it, Marvel fans have are really showing them. I mean, to go and say, hey, yeah, I, I purchased tickets, but no, I want a refund. Because it doesn't <laughs> that, make sense. Like, like, it's like, not even a part of the storyline. Like it does it, it's 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 really, really bad. It's really, really it's bad. So uh so we'll see we'll see how everything goes. I'm just it's really it's this is you bad. know it'll be on Disney Plus in a couple of weeks. Right. Which right. Which is why fans are saying, why are you charging me a fortune for Disney Plus when you got all these flop movies and shows out here? Exactly, exactly. So um uh let uh, us do uh before we go into DC, we have a new segment called I Heard a Rumor. Take a look. I heard a rumor. I heard a rumor. I heard, I heard a rumor. I heard a rumor. Shout out to the Umbrella Academy. <laughs> All right, so um, 
we heard a rumor, well, I heard a rumor <laughs> that um, that Henry Cavill, and this is not confirmed. I want to make sure that, let me get my, my, my rumor report notes. Um, it uh, Henry Cavill has not confirmed uh, that he joined the MCU uh, as, of, as of this time of reporting. But there is a rumor that Henry Cavill uh, is seeking, um, or MTU fans are seeking uh, Henry Cavill to join the MCU, and that he's been in talks with um, with uh, with Marvel. There's some people who are reporting on blogs uh, that he has made he signed a deal. We don't know that for to be true, um, and there's speculation on which shows uh, or what movies he could possibly be in. Um, one is Captain Britain. Uh, that is a huge um, one that's being said that they, he may be uh, taking place in. I can see that because of his look and how he is, and he's already British, and because of the fact that he has said before that he um, would like to play Captain Britain. So um, his physique will fit the whole look. He has a look for Captain Britain um, and stuff like that. So uh, there's been some fan um, pictures of him and seeing him to be Captain Britain. There's also a rumor that he may play uh, Sentry, um, which is kind of like the equivalent of Superman, which would make sense because he was Superman in DC. But again, this is a rumor. Um, and he, uh, people are saying, well, he doesn't have the look for it. Well, he was, he was, um, in the Witcher and he can fit that, um, that stereo or that, that look as well. So, uh, also more fan art of him potentially being Sentry as well. Um, but another rumor has been coming out and saying that um, this is why they think that he is in the MCU because they think that he is Doctor Doom. Now, I do not think that he is Doctor Doom. Um, I, I, I don't see him playing a character that is covering his face most of the time um, because he's very pretty, he's very attractive, and so th it doesn't make sense for him to, you know, he could fit other roles. So I don't see him in that role, um, but that's just my personal opinion. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's that's really what's going on here. But there is a, a substantial amount of rumors going on saying that they think that he is um, in the MCU. So what are your thoughts on this, uh, Dominic? Well, I really don't like this segment because I don't like to really talk about rumors, especially right. stuff that doesn't have any legs. Mm -hmm. This is just a rumor. So I don't yeah. have any comment. Okay, we'll leave it at that then. <laughs> this is why Dominic gets uh, still gets invited to the MCU and DC uh, parties, so we'll leave it at that. But let me see what uh, the people say in here. I would like to see him as uh, North Star in Alpha Flight. Now that would be interesting. All right, Simeon. Huh. I didn't think about that. All right, well, let's go ahead and get back into uh, the blurred news. I uh, hope you enjoyed that uh, little rumor. I'm going to cover the rumor report because, uh, or I heard a rumor because Dominic does not like rumors, and I like to, I like to, to speculate about the things when it comes to. Him. I like to it's talk about reality. <laughs> right, he could not even be a part of any of this. Um, no, he is I, I'm to firmly against it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but anyway, let's head on over. Uh, uh, to DC Studios. Let's talk about the Lanterns. Um, Lanterns uh, release window plot and everything we know so far about DC's cosmic detective show. With the um, with many uh, with the many wielders um, of the Green Lantern ring seemingly feeling much more comfortable on the small screen, it makes sense that the new DC studio CEOs James Gunn and Peter Safran have opted to use the serialized television format to bring the Green Lanterns into their new DC universe. Simply titled Lanterns, the plural use the plural use of the word is deliberate as the show will star not one, but two main heroes, Hal Jordan and my favorite, John Stewart, uh, who That's shared sweet. the title of Green Lantern. Gunn confirmed in his announcement that Lanterns will be uh, released as a Max exclusive series. Uh, this comes as no surprise given that Max has become a one-stop shop for all your DC content needs, especially when it comes to Green Lantern. The 2011 film, the Justice League animated series Green Lantern, the animated series, and just about every Green Lantern animated film can be found on one of the best streaming series uh, services money can buy right now. S since the... Uh since the show is still in pre-production, Lanterns doesn't have a hard release date or schedule yet, but it does have a vague release window. Uh, Gunn 
um, also said the series will essentially function as the DC Universe equivalent of True Detective, uh, showing a crime mystery genre may be in play. In Gunn's release plan announcement, it appears the Lanterns will release sometime between Gunn's uh, Superman reboot, uh, Superman Legacy in 2025, and the super anti-hero ensemble film The Authority. Uh, the Authority doesn't have a release date yet either, um, but it will. Uh, but we do know that Superman Legacy is planned to be uh, released in theaters on July 11th, 2025. That that means that we can make, we can more than likely expect to see Lancers arrive on Max sometime next fall in 2025, as the December 23, 2023, as of December 2023. Excuse me. Max has uh, just over 96 million subscribers, less than 25 million away from Netflix, and 15 million less than Disney. What are your thoughts, Dominic? I love how they ended that to say, hey, look at what we're doing real good. Right. Our subscriptions are up. Right. They're like, <laughs> hey, girl. Funny. Right. The last time we heard, they had 80 million. So I'm happy they have 96. That's a, that's a huge jump in a yeah. year. And uh, yeah, they're really competing, as you can tell, with Netflix and Disney Plus, mm -hmm, which are mm -hmm. their uh, competitors. And I love how they say that Max is one of the best streaming services money can buy right now. It's you another they, dig, and I didn't write that. So right, <laughs> they had to dig. They had to, that. they had to throw that dig in without without any yeah. question. But I'm interested in Lance. I'm here for I've always, it. Yeah, I'm super here for it because I, I I've love. I think the people only know about the Green Lanterns, but there's such a huge yeah. um, universe with just in the Green Lanterns and or the Lantern Corps itself. So there's so many yes. different colors and so many different um, uh, storylines. I love the animated series, uh, both of them. Um, they they're just really really and all of the films that they've done. So we'll see. DC's yeah. doing their thing at least with, as far as um, animation goes. They have it on lock. Yeah. So uh, well, we'll see. True how Detective. Goes is hbo uh or max uh number one show right now mm -hmm. true detective yeah. starring jodie foster and i forgot the other lady it is a very popular series it's a hit. so to hear that it's going to be in that same lane which means it's going to be very thrilling yeah so i i am here for it allegedly i heard that they have uh, art out which shows hal jordan in his green classic green lantern outfit but they have john in yellow interesting yes yeah, so huh. and they're saying that you know they're buddies obviously they're uh partners and it looks like john stewart is going to be undercover as a yellow lantern which is mm -hmm. I, we've never seen anything like that before yeah never yeah, ever ever really ever interesting. that's really interesting well yeah we'll see how everything goes y'all i'm here we'll, for it i'm yeah. here for it all right, y'all, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about T.C. Carlson and what he has done for not only just black uh, black uh, television series, but specifically what he's done for the black uh, nerd world. Um, so uh, stay tuned and we'll be right back after this commercial break. <music> Because self-care should be luxurious. Luxe Noir. Hey pilots, did you know that you can now catch the electrifying sounds of Bullet and Flight Radio anywhere you go? Yes, you heard it right. Tune in to the high flying beats and soaring melodies by downloading the TuneIn app on your mobile device. Just search for Bullet and Flight Radio and hit play. It's that easy. And if you have a smart device like Alexa or Google, just say, hey, Google or Alexa, play Bullet and Flight Radio on TuneIn. Experience the rush of adrenaline wherever you are. Listen to Bullet and Flight Radio on TuneIn using your Alexa or Google devices. Soaring through the skies has never sounded this good. Don't miss out on the ultimate musical journey. Tune in now to Bullet and Flight Radio on TuneIn and let the music take you on an unforgettable ride. 
get ready to elevate your listening experience. Brought to you by Bullet and Flight Radio. y'all by popular demand thank you guys so much for tuning in make sure that you guys hit that like button share and subscribe and don't forget to hit up all of our, of our sponsors that includes bullet in flight radio the number one progressive christian and inspirational radio station in the world and if you haven't done so already make sure you go ahead and text blaze b-l-a-z-e to um to a three three seven nine three two four two three it uh will allow you to get notifications directly from pyro media if you are not getting notifications from youtube or twitch shout out to those watching on twitch i see you guys thank you guys so much all right y'all let's get into some things here we are getting into maverick time and it is uh, your time to shine all right so we're gonna be talking about uh well you guys know that we've been um uh actually dominic created go over the this list and go over the list I guess I will go over it, and I'm going to also make sure that you guys, uh, if you have not uh, had an opportunity to do so, you can go ahead and check out the Unusual Mavericks playlist right here on Pyro Media Network. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share that to you guys. And also on Instagram, shout out to those watching on Instagram. Thank you so much. Uh, First up, we went through uh some amazing kings and queens first up halim flowers uh we talked about afua richardson uh we talked about matt big hey matt how you doing Matt? Hey, God bless hey. you. thank you so much for all that you have done uh dr sheena howard uh as well uh alethea uh, martinez the one and only d dwayne mcduffie one of our uh dominic and I, uh, heroes sanford green hey. we also talk about natasha uh bustos we talked about a uh, little Lo, excuse me, Lo, Loiso Bakizi. Forgive me for mispronouncing your name. Robin Smith. Uh, we also talked about Jamal Campbell. What's up, Jamal? Um, Nyla Magruder. Shout out to her. We also talked about Anthony Piper. Hey, Anthony. Um, and we also talked about Phil Lamar. Shout out to Phil Lamar. Cree Summer, the legendary Cree Summer. Yes. And the legendary Keith. David, my God on today. We also talked about Carrie Payton. Hey, Carrie, how you doing? Carrie, I think um, me and Dominic need to have a meeting with you separately and, you know, separate times. So just go ahead and holler at us, okay? Praise Jesus. Um, And also <laughs> Kevin Michael Richardson. Shout out to him. And the one, the only, Anika Noni Rose. Um, Princess Tiana herself, the voice. Uh, Kimberly Brooks, we talked about her as well. And I was really shocked at all the stuff that she did. Shout out to her. Um, and Dorian uh, Harewood, uh, we talked about him last week. But today, this week, we're going to be talking with you. Dr. Say, hey, Freddie. Hey, Macaro. <laughs> this, this week, we're going to be talking about the one and only and asking the question, who is T.C. Carson? Uh, do you want to let us know who he is, uh, Dominic? Sure will. So let's get into the introduction of Mr. T.C. Carson. Terrence C. Carson was born in November 19th, 1958. Wow, I didn't, okay, he's holding on. Looking good, TC. Black on He is, of course, that's right. He is an American actor, best known for uh, portraying Kyle Barker on the Fox sitcom Living Single and voicing Mace Windu in various Star Wars media. He is also known for his long running voice work and role as Kratos in God of War, the video game series, which ran from 2005 to 2013. Now, looking at some of his highlights, we've already said he's best known for playing Kyle Barker in the hit uh, 90s sitcom Living Single. A lot of people don't know that he was a series regular for the first four seasons and was bumped to a reoccurring uh, character <laughs> during season five after he had a disagreement or clash with one of the new writers, whatever. Mm. So, which he now characterizes, just so people know, as a firing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting. But anyway, that led him to do some other things, which we're very happy about. 
he provided the voice for Samuel and Mr. Carson in the PBS kids animated series, Clifford, the Big Red Doll. He also, in 1999, he provided the voice of Officer Dan in Rugrats. As a voice actor, he voiced, as we said, Mace Windu in everything Star Wars, from the animated series, Star Wars Clone Wars, which one? He also, the Republic Heroes, the Lego Star Wars movie, the Skywalker saga, and he also continued playing Mace Windu. And, and Mace Windu in live action was played by Samuel L. Jackson, for those that saw all the Star Wars stuff. Yeah, same character. So it's really weird they didn't get uh, Samuel L, but TC is no runner up in any way. This guy is to me, it's absolutely awesome. And so anyway, all the video games as well. So he continued doing his voice work as Kratos, the legendary video game now of God of War, which mm -hmm. was a PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 uh, game, top earning game as well. TC also was the voice of the swords master assassin in Afro Samurai. I loved Afro Samurai. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know he played him. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know he was a part of that. Because I usually can, I knew he was Mace Windu. I, as mm -hmm. soon as I heard of Mace, I was like, wait the hell, that's Kratos. I always call him right. Kratos now. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, in 2016, Carson also voiced, he was the voice of Rasha Ghoul or Rasha Ghoul mm -hmm. in Justice League versus Teen Titans. If you have not seen that animated film, it is on Max, it is really worth your time. It's Phenomenal. Very well done, yeah. So he also was the voice of uh, Cal Chas. I think that's how you say his name, in Tron Evolution and Tron Evolution Battle Grids. Those are two very popular animated cartoons. I did check those out uh, as well, and, and they're 2016, 2017 produced. So if you like Tron, uh, you may like the animated series as well. Mm -hmm. Lastly, just last year, he provided the voice of who we were just talking about, John Stewart Green Lantern yes. in Justice League uh, Cosmic Chaos. So yeah. that is the, he's done a lot more than this, but overall, this is what he's done in voice acting, which is no small feat. Yes. Whew. What a legend. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm super happy that he's a part of our celebration of 100 years of people of color being in comic books and animation. It's really yeah. a big deal. Shout out to you, King. Uh, Dr. Holt says, uh, now this is a serious question. It's It's been alluded to that he is LGBTQIA plus a lot, lot. Yeah. Is that true? Do we know? I thought that he was, but let me go ahead and confirm that. Um, TC Carson... I've never seen him make a, a, a statement statement about this. Uh, I did you know he was in that movie years ago. Did you see that movie he was in, Dr. Holt? It was actually so really good. I can't, can't remember the name of it. There's no confirmation on that, but he said no. uh, it looks like there is a... It's just rumors, um, but he, uh, he said that just because you're single doesn't mean that you're gay. Um, so I don't know. I don't think there's any confirmation on that. But he does play no, gay characters, and I think that's really the, one of the reasons why um, uh, in there. But I, I, started. I, yeah, Correct. either way, he's super talented. I don't, you know, uh, sexuality aside, he's super talented, super handsome, and super, super dope. So I'm, I'm really happy that he's been able to use his voice in so many different ways. Um, I know that I loved him on Living Single. Living Single is one of my favorite uh, sitcoms, and so for him Absolutely. to to um, play such an iconic role, and then to know that he has continued on doing other things that, um, you know, I, I just think that's really, really dope. So, and shout really out to iconic you. roles. Yeah. He, he, people don't really recognize that, but in Star Wars, playing Mace Windu, the only black man in the whole Star Wars, well, well, I should say that, he's the only black Jedi that we mm -hmm. have seen in the entire Star Wars universe. To yeah. take that mantle on is huge. And he was a very, 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 very powerful Jedi. 
and then Kratos of all yeah. people. That, that, I played that's God of War the now. First, I played the first God of War game when I was younger. So yeah, I, I that was that was a phenomenal game. Um, so yeah, so the fact that he was able to do that, like you know, he is very handsome now. Uh, hey, TC, you so see. <laughs> I don't know if that's a, a recent picture of him, but I know I know that he is. Um, he is. Uh, he's he saw Pepper there. now. Yeah, yeah saw Pepper is him yeah, now. This, this right here is, I think, his one of his most recent pictures. So yeah. uh, actually, I know his manager. Oh, you do? Yeah, I know I his know. manager. His manager is from Detroit. We met each other many, many years ago. Yeah, I think this is how he looks now. Uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. So, but shout out to him. All right. And he's a jazz singer. He just came out with a new jazz album, I think, over the last year. So if you're into that, uh, the jazz, check out his album. It's really good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, shout out to, uh, oh, oh, you know that his manager, give me his number, Dump. <laughs> we don't give out people's number. What's wrong with you, Dr. Hall? <laughs> you're so funny. <laughs> All right. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure that you guys hit that like button on your way out. And also- Oh, did you put the link in? Uh, the link is not working. I tried to uh, click on it. So if you have it, you can send it to me right now. If not, oh no, really? Then, yeah, the link's not working. Oh, um, that's one of the reasons I was trying to call you earlier. <laughs> I forgot about that too. <laughs> so, oh. uh, my bad. <laughs> but it's all good. Well, um, uh, you guys can just type in TC Carson. He's not. He's not a, a regular, regular, regular person. He is very well known. So I would type in um, uh, TC Carson. Uh, Carson, excuse me, uh, behind the voice actor. So you'll be able to kind of see um, about him or even just type in TC Carson and voice acting and you'll see all of his information. He is very well known. Yeah. Um, apparently, I, yeah. When I typed in um, uh, TC Carson, I, when I get prepped for these shows, um, everything came up and I put voice yeah. acting, TC yeah. Carson and everything came up. So you, it's, it's not hard. And it's to a go. whole lot more, right? It's a whole Absolutely. lot more that he did than what we talked about. Yes. I just try to stay with the Marvel DC universe stuff. So yeah, yeah because that's our focus. But yeah. He's, he's just done so much. Yeah. And definitely uh, uh, if you could reach out to us, uh, uh, we would love to have you on the show, sir. We'd love to talk about more of your accomplishments. Yes. Praise Jesus. Well, we'll have Let's... to contact the, the David brand. Yes, shout out to the David Brand. Dr. Holt said my mom yes. actually met him. He was at one of the Delta's conventions once. He is a member of uh, Iota Phi Theta, the last fraternity of the Divine Nine. Shout out to the Divine Nine. Yes. Okay. Shout out to the Deltas. Hey, Mama Holt. Yes. We love Mama Holt. I know, that's right. Uh, All right, <laughs> y'all. Right, uh, well, I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else, Dominic? Yes. One oh. other thing that, that I have in my rumors, but this is starting to become more of a reality. We reported it on a few weeks ago. Uh, Mr. Domingo, remember Coleman Domingo? Domingo? Uh, Coleman yeah. Domingo, that he's trending again, mm -hmm. and he's yet to confirm now that he will be playing Kang the Conqueror. So uh, huh. there's a lot going on there. He has met, his people have met with Marvel quite a bit. So the people are starting to legitimately report that he will be replacing a uh, Jonathan Majors as King the Conqueror. Well, and, there, uh, there's so much confusion around that because I'm I'm seeing a lot of geek um, uh, vloggers saying that you know um, that they're that Marvel's going in a different direction. They're not even going to go. Even they're going to replace. They're going to Ultron. Gonna they're talking about Ultron. And I was like, why? Are we why would they bring back like Ultron? We just did him. I, I don't understand that. That that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. They're a mess over there right now. They are in a pickle. Yeah, they need to figure some stuff out um, because it's not cute. No. <laughs> it's not cute. It's getting a little crazy. But yeah, that's all we got. Um, we're going to keep an eye out and everything. And and again, what you know, when we when there's any breaking news or anything like that, we'll we're, be reporting it every Thursday at five at four p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, seven p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Is it seven? I think it's seven. Yes, it's seven. Uh, seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but yeah, until then, we love you guys. Stay blessed. Stay stress free, and we'll see you on the next one. Um, until then, stay unusual. See you Peace. guys. Bye. <laughs>
Thank you for watching Cairo Media Network. For more information, please visit CairoMediaNetwork.com.